You're not always going to have an item that just as a thousand dollars revenue a month in a sector. You're going to have some that are doing 10, 20. And the problem is that people don't understand in this space, if you've no experience and you've got an item that's doing 50 grand a month, that's a hungry thing. You likely will not have enough money to keep funding that. Definitely there's a logistical piece. And the exciting thing is when you solve it, you make it easier for people, then it's a great partnership. I've heard horror stories that Amazon has this kind of stack of fees. By the time you get done, uh, maybe your margins are three to 5%. We talk about the Amazon iceberg, right? The iceberg method, we call it. So you can imagine an iceberg above the surface, beneath the surface, right? right. A lot of people are focused on the tip of the iceberg on Amazon, which are these massive, hyper-competitive products that it's a race to the bottom, everyone's pumping advertising, everybody's pushing. There's people killing each other with negative reviews and right. there's all kinds of horrible things happening, right? And that's at the tip of the iceberg. And there's people teach to sell those products. I'm not gonna name any names, but there's many people in our space that do that. And so, yeah, like in those cases, I would say margins are squeezed, awful uh, competitive things happen, and it's not nice. Uh, however, we have beneath the iceberg, beneath the surface, and that's where we focus on. We're selling products that, like I mentioned, like a seed box. There's not that many people interested in seed boxes, mm -hmm. but they sell, and they sell every single day, and they do well. I'm not saying go out and buy seed boxes. I'm just saying like that type of an item does well versus a supplement, like a whatever supplement that just sells billions a day, whatever. Right, like a, okay. like a natural testosterone booster for 40 year old yeah. men or something. Which is gonna just be an unbelievably high seller. And certainly, you know, if you wanna go down that line, cool. But what people don't understand is that like, there's a, so much to this conversation, but I would say in that case, those hyper competitive products, yes, Amazon will do their own version of that eventually. Absolutely. Right. You know, you're gonna see that, that's always thrown back. Oh, Amazon just, will just go and pick the best things and just sell them. Well, well, they do do that, yeah. But there's also 350 million items on the Amazon platform, which people can't comprehend that number. And yeah. what what actually um, over 60% of Amazon's money comes from third-party sellers. So, so there's a lot of choice. So as I mentioned, we don't go after those hyper-competitive items. We're below the iceberg. We're below the surface. We're looking at lower competitive stuff. In our space, people are not smashing each other. You know, there's competition for sure, but it's not the same hyper competition. It clicks down in our neck of the woods, you're into the sense. Clicks up there, you're into three to five dollars a click. You know, you, you will be like, so what, what we have in our ecosystem, we have this big tool we call the sandbox. And so we calculate every single cost that is going to go into doing this. We calculate the Amazon fees, the handling fees, everything. We calculate the import fees. We calculate the duties. We cal it's all done. So you mm -hmm. know to the cent where you're going to be. And also with our freight service, we, we are slashing people's import, import costs, which is where another place people get really hurt in this, mm. in this space. So what happens then is we can see, we'll show you your profit via air freight. We'll show you our profit via C freight with a freight forwarder. We'll show you our profit via C freight with ourselves. And you know your exact margin. So what we look at is we call a POR, which is 30% of the sales price. That should be your net profit before tax when you make a sale. And then some people will go on about PPC on, on Amazon. Well, any entrepreneur who knows what they're talking about knows you can't include advertising costs in your cost of sales because in your cost of goods, sorry, uh, simply because you don't know how much you're going to put into your advertising. So yeah, that can take some percentage points off. We typically see the types of items we're selling 25 to 30% of the sales price is going to be the net profit before tax. But absolutely in the space you're talking about, which is the hyper competitive world, which I have no interest in. There's some hmm. weird things going on. Okay. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And, and admittedly the main guy that I was getting that data from was too. Two friends I've had that have put a lot of time and money into Amazon selling, and they were both selling what I would consider to be pretty competitive products. Yeah. Um, that? One was one was a like a basically a, a, a pillow. It was just like a, a nice, comfortable oh. pillow. <laughs> yeah. And the other was uh, uh, some friends of mine that were selling, you know, some basic like kitchenware stuff, like yeah, like Which... Tupperware type containers yeah. and. 
we and we would we would call we run on my off and that stuff like literally like because yeah. we're just it like i say there's people making millions doing that it's not going to be us right that's no interesting that. we'll we'll sell dog whistles you know we'll sell we'll sell these boring things uh we'll sell the things that cover the feet of a washing machine and we'll sell items that do revenue in in a country of a thousand dollars a month but then there's three sectors us europe and everything else so the way, way we say it is if we've got an item that's doing a thousand dollars in each sector there's three thousand dollars a month with one item over the year 36 grand right three 30 percent of that ish is going to be your net your net gross ish profit a few things gonna to have to come out of that obviously yeah but, but whatever so you're you know then all of a sudden you're like well if i've got a good we've got plenty of those in my business then you know where that's going to go but then what always happens in our world is you get we have these different types of products we call one uh, a worker a winner and a star so a worker doubles its money within nine months that's it, it sells it doubles its money so right? when you so say it, doubles its money you mean let's say you spend five thousand dollars on inventory and another five thousand dollars on advertising well we wouldn't spend that much on ads in our in our model just okay. the way we do things uh, you could say five thousand cumulative cost and we would want to turn it into 10 at a simple level. Like, I mean, right. wouldn't be putting, I mean, I, Ali, one of our, so we actually document some of the, some of our students. Ali is one of our students. He's actually a, a coach now in our, in our company. His business is going to hit a million dollars revenue this year, but his ad spend per month, I'd have to get the exact figures, but it's like a couple of thousand dollars. Like it's not 10, mm -hmm. 20, 30,000. We're just not doing that. We're not selling those types of items. Um, so, so I suppose the point anyway is, these three types of items, the star is going to be the big one. Like we, we've got a loads of examples that we show. Uh, and I, I try not to give, there's always partners or different people. I don't want to say what their products are because they go mental. But right. we've got one guy, I'd say it's a product in the hunting niche. It's a really silly product. But this thing sells like per month across the globe about $25,000 revenue per month. So that's like a small mini business in itself. And the advertising cost is, minimal right uh, because it's not competitive it's not a re it's not one of these competitive hyper competitive items so i suppose the point is you're not always going to have an item that just does a thousand dollars revenue a month in a sector you're going to have some that are doing 10 20 we've got we've got some people doing 50 grand a month with one item and the problem is that people don't understand in this space if you've no experience and you've got an item that's doing 50 grand a month that's a hungry thing you likely will not have enough money to keep funding that because yeah. You got to get more money to get the future sales because you got to produce your inventory, import it, and so we actually we actually fund a lot of our members uh, who who don't have the capital, and we we take a slice of the action because they can't do it, and that's the thing. It's like be careful what you wish for in this space, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. A lot of I mean that's the number one thing we've even found in our business um, because we sell you know we're we're a knowledge business we're like a like a school we're selling education we're selling courses we're selling things like we're not shipping things to people right um but we grew so fast last year we scaled we were we would we would have we would finish out a month at a certain amount of revenue and in the next 30 days we would spend more on ads to keep scaling than yeah. the entirety of the revenue we brought in in the previous 30 days yeah like if you really think, you know, imagine you make a million dollars and then you want to get to $3 million. So you have to spend 1.2 on advertising. Mm -hmm. You only made a million dollars the month before gross, right? So you have an amazing story. If you wouldn't mind, kind of give us the, the highlights, you know, how did uh, Steven Summers become a marketplace superhero and um, rather than a, you know, a nine to five grunt? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, first of all, I'm 34 years old almost, just for anybody, just to get my kind of perspective on my age. Okay. And I've been doing this now for 11 years. So I'm an 11 year uh, overnight success story right. at this point in time. And like a lot of people, when I was in my, I suppose, very early 20s, I wanted to learn how to make money online. That was the big goal. I was in a band before that. I was trying to be a rock star that did Sweet. not work out, unfortunately. <laughs> I just sing in the shower these days. Uh, but uh, you know, I was, I was. That's what I thought I was going to do with my life. And I was studying business in in college uh, at nighttime, actually, while I was working as a data processor, which is the most boring job in the history of mankind. In case you didn't know. 
And so I was doing all these little things. And then, of course, you know, the band ended when I was 19, 20. And I just became really directionless, uh, eating bad food, drinking too much and all the rest. And I was like, OK, how am I going to make money? What am I going to do? I don't want to work in this job forever. I don't want to go to college. Actually, I don't want to finish college because I want to do my own thing. And so I tried lots of different things. You know, I looked into affiliate marketing and all these different drop shipping and everything else. And just to me at that time, like I wasn't an expert in anything. I was a data processor. So selling products on the internet just made sense to me, physical products. It just felt like a good business to be in. It just felt like it wasn't like an opportunity thing I had to convince anybody of. And it was right. cool. So um, yeah, I basically started selling. I tried to sell a product on Amazon myself. I was a cream canvas wardrobe. I got my money back, but I didn't make any money because I Wait, didn't say, have a- say that again. What was the first product? Green canvas wardrobe. Yes. Uh, very boring. Um, but it was uh, too competitive and I didn't know how to research products. I didn't know how to validate products or anything like that. I just, I just tried. And so I got my money back and I thought, well, I can't make a living getting my money back all the time. So I better find someone who can help me. And so uh, I was, I was looking about, and I just said, I'm going to tell people what I'm looking to do. So my aunt came along and said, hey, I heard you're looking to sell stuff on Amazon and eBay and everything. I've got this guy called Robert who can help you. And he's still my business partner to this day. And he was like, a, he is and was a six foot two, big Irish dude, big beard, love drinking beer. And I was like, okay, this is going to be my mentor. Interesting. <laughs> and so I quit my job and I started working with Robert and uh, I worked there for nearly a year. For, for And uh, basically after working together for a year, uh, we just decided, Hey, uh, let's just, let's just start from scratch. Let's just go with this Amazon thing. Let's sell lots of different products and lots of different categories. And we literally restarted the whole company because he had the two warehouses at the time. We had lots of staff. We were doing all the fulfillment ourselves, all the customer support ourselves, and we were just selling on marketplaces. And so, yeah, the big change was let's just sell on Amazon globally. And so we did that for a number of years and then, uh, you know, started showing people what we were doing in 2014. So we were doing it for a number of years before we started teaching it. And uh, yeah, so since 2014, Marketplace Superheroes is now, you know, a six time two comic club award winning business. And we're just about to get the X award. And we have 8,000 clients and we have a freight company. We're going to ship about 8 million units this year. Wow. And it's, it's great with software and everything else. So we can all get into all of that, of course, but uh, that's the kind of abridged version of the, of the story. Yeah, that's fantastic, man. I, I love it. Um, you know, we've both been at it for about the same amount of time. It sounds like you started maybe what, 2010? Yeah, exactly. Okay. I started in the very end of 2008. So I had about a one year jump on you. Um, mm -hmm. I was in Texas, you were in Ireland, you know, it, it's, uh, and, and, you know, I mean, the, these, it's a universal opportunity for people. It's also, I think a pretty universal story for those of us that have made it work that like, yeah, it doesn't happen overnight. No, it's, it's hard, but it's not hard because it's hard. Like digging ditches is hard or, yeah. you know, welding is hard or bending rebar is hard. It's hard because psychologically you do it and it doesn't work. Meaning, yeah. oh, I'm not rich yet. And then you second guess it and then you yeah. qu quit and then nothing happens. And then you become one of the casualties who tells stories about how internet marketing is a scam and online business doesn't work. And, oh, you know, watch out for those guys. Right. Yeah. But uh, you stuck with it. So, yeah. so, so why, what, you know, and, and I always ask my guests this on this show because, yeah. um, you know, I, I think I've had probably, I don't know, 160, 170 guests at this point on the show. Yeah. And I ask every one of them, like, like, what do you think makes you the rare specimen who actually stuck with it and until it clicked and yeah. didn't bail out in the first year or two or three, like most people do? What, what, yeah. what makes yeah. you so special? Yeah, well, I, I think for me personally, uh, it kind of goes back to when I was about 11 years old. There's mm -hmm. a reason I'm going to tell you this. So I was really big into soccer back then. Um, localizing for the American folk and the Canadians here. Right, right. So soccer I was playing back and we call it football over here, of course, but football is very different in America. So uh, the reason I tell you that is because 
I had a coach who told me I wasn't good enough to get onto the team, said I wasn't part of the winning combination. And so whenever he told me that, it really spurred me on. And I remember just saying, I'm going to work all summer long. I'm going to get a tennis ball. I'm going to kick it against the wall until I get good at this damn football thing. And then I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to prove this guy wrong. And so long story short there, within a year, I was the top player in my county and I couldn't get in the team before this. And I went on and football, soccer was going to be my pathway until lots of injuries. My body just wasn't, wasn't capable of, uh, of playing soccer professionally. But the, the point is I learned the value of hard work back then. I learned the value of just not giving up and keeping going with something, gritting the teeth and going through it. So I think then, you know, the reason I stuck with it when I got older in life, uh, a couple of reasons, that's one of them that I just, I do not, I do not like to lose. I like to keep going and figure something out. Also, I had Robert as well that I worked with. He was my business partner, still is today. And we were working on it together, you know. We were, um, it was like a, a journey for the two of us. And we were there to support one another. So we were fortunate in that way. But I think overall, more than anything else, I I was only, I was 23 starting into all this. And a lot of people, I get a bit of, I get a bit of flack for that sometimes. Like, well, you were only 23. You say you hated your job, but you were only working for a few years and all of that. And, and to me, I just was like, yeah, but, I know how I felt back then. And I just felt so depressed at that time in my life. I was like, I didn't see very many prospects for my future. I didn't know where I was going to go, what I was going to do. And so it was that feeling of like, I do not want to go back into the office and have everybody say, told you so. Because in yeah. Ireland, people love saying told you so in Ireland. And so that really drove me on, you know? You know, that's interesting right there at the end. You said love saying told you so in Ireland. Um, mm. We just opened up our... Uh, at Entra, my company, which is, you know, say, kind of similar, right? We teach online business. We teach more broadly, right? I think we teach a lot of different types of business and general entrepreneurship, yeah. but um, it's same principle, right? You got people out there that are frustrated or stuck or just want more and they come find folks like us who have these education programs. And we just opened up to United Kingdom, our advertising. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, we have a few other... Because we've done, big, we've we've scaled really big here in the U.S. We're looking U.K. first, but obviously Australia and Canada are kind of next on our radar. And, and when I say U.K., I'm including Ireland. Um, oh. I don't know. I actually don't know the geopolitics if that's accurate. Don't but don't even don't even worry about it. Just okay. UK and Ireland is fine. <laughs> yeah, I don't want I don't want to I don't want to piss off an Irishman by saying the wrong uh, thing. But yeah. uh, but it's interesting because the way you advertise in non-US English speaking countries has to be tailored to the culture. You know, in Australia, they have something called tall poppy syndrome where they, they do not believe a poppy should grow too tall and they will whack you, you down, right? Yeah. Um, and UK, you know, the, the sort of stereotype is that, well, they're just really cynical and they Absolutely. don't believe anything. So, so don't tell them, what you're going to do for them. Don't make any grand uh, suggest suggestions or promises. Just yeah. give them facts, show yeah. them enough evidence that the facts must be true, yeah. and then kind of let them draw their own conclusion. And that that's how you advertise over there. So it's funny yes. you say they love to say, I told you so. Is it really as bad as we've been told? Yeah, no, I mean, definitely. You know, a lot of my audience uh, that, that we work with are actually North American. Right. Um, not the people in this part of the world, you know, I don't want to work. And we have loads of clients from the UK and Ireland, but they're the, they're the kind of the few believers, if you want to call it that, right, that are that are in that population. And unfortunately, yeah, like in the UK and Ireland, we, we have a very different culture to the US. You know, US uh, the, culturally, um, you know, you're talking about... You know the american dream like that yeah. was a big thing in the us for a long time people are taught from a young age you can be whatever you want you can go as far as you want and obviously in the us as well you can go as low as you want which is which is tricky you know we get into health insurance and everything right. else, which we're not right. but you know but but it, but the point is you can go as high as you want and it's kind of like it, it's it's supported very much in culturally in the us i think that's a great thing here in ireland um and i i, I won't swear just in case i don't know if it's a family show but i won't swear yeah. but they they would uh, but but uh, I would say um, over here, if someone drives in a really nice car and they're wealthy, well, people would be like, well, they're probably an a-hole, you know, just most likely they're an a-hole. Whereas right. in America, it, it, it's, that's not the way it is. So, so you're right, like absolutely, culturally, it's very different. What we did and what we have done, which has been interesting, is we've taken that approach 
uh, to the US, to the North American audience, as well as our own audience. And we've, we've, just been, we've just been known now for straight talking, right in the middle. We're going to tell you how it works. We're going to tell you what's involved. And it's worked really well for us because the people that we attract are the people who want to go on and really sell on Amazon, invest proper money to bring in their own branded stuff. They want to use our freight services, which, by the way, our warehouse is in Houston, Texas. Oh. What part of Texas are you in? I was born in Houston. Yeah, I live in Utah now, but I spent my first 30 years in Houston, yeah. Texas. I heard you say in Texas earlier on. Yeah. yeah so, uh, so there you go. Yeah. And so, um, so we, they're going to use all these services, which is great for us because we want to partner with our clients long term. Uh, and I think, yeah, like uh, if we approached it from a, from a very hype, like, not, I don't want to say hypey, but you know what I mean? Bigger promises, all of that over to this part of the world. You're right. People do uh, distrust you straight away. They don't like it. And so um, I think we just kind of were fortunate that we just brought the same approach no matter where we go. And uh, people in the US have loved it because they're like, oh, this is great. You know, we really can trust you guys. You were just so clear. And Not that you can't trust someone if they're making a promise because by the way, your company included, I'm sure you're able to back up what you're saying. It's just a different way of having to, uh, to approach it, you know? Yeah, it's actually, it's so funny. I mean, for anybody who's, who's interested in kind of the mechanics of, of what we do, I'll, I'll share this. Um, it's funny because... Like when you're creating advertising, you have to be so sensitive to uh, the, you know, the avatar, right? The, the person, the idealized person that you're targeting. And so here in the U.S., you know, I'm, I've kind of reached a point now where, because obviously a lot of our advertising, I'm sure it's the same for you. The advertising is kind of based on the story, right? Like my name's Jeff Lerner. I did this, I did this, and I've generated this result and I'm going to show you how I've done it, right? Yeah. Um, and my story has actually gotten too big. Mm -hmm. So I can't, I can't say, let me show you, you know, at this point I'm, I'm, I'm flirting roughly with about a hundred million dollars in sales online. Yeah. Now, I can't advertise with that number, not because it isn't true, not because I couldn't back it up because yeah. it's just too incredulous. Right. So yeah. in the U S you know, we kind of split test, right. We're like, well, what if I said, you know, because I've, I've been at different amounts all the way up to that number. So what if I said 10 million? What if I said 40 million? What if I said 60 million? And, you know, we've kind of found our sweet spot in the US. But when you go over to the UK, because we're making at work in the UK, the no, you basically got to like chop a zero off. <laughs> you know, yeah. you can't you can't be if you talk about being too successful, whether it's financially or you know, if you show a picture of a house and the house is too big, or you show a picture of your car and the car goes too fast, they just, you, it's like, you have to like, if you're, if you're showing a picture and I, I hate this, I don't, we don't do this period, but if you're showing a picture of a Lamborghini in the U S yeah. it has to be like a, like maybe like a Tesla model S or something, <laughs> something that's nice, but not as, yeah. as expensive and flashy. It's just so oh, yeah. funny it to me. So so yeah. why did you think, I mean, it begs the question, why did this Irish kid think I'm going to go online and create this extraordinary life for myself? Because that's not really the cultural norm for you. Yeah, like I, I surrender myself with a lot of US culture. You know, um, when, I, when I was working in my job, which I hated, I would walk to work every day listening to Brian Tracy, Tony Robbins, you know, Ooh. Jack Hampton and you know all the all the kind of personal development greats if you want to call it that there's lots more of course as well and lots of great women as well but we're just naming a couple of names off the top of my head right uh, and so uh, and now i did that for too long i should have been listening to more practical things as well but the point is that i brainwashed myself with positivity and i really just was like okay well it's possible and like there are a lot of people here in ireland that, that i've found over the last few years who think the same way they have that same let's call it kind of American type belief system that it's possible. And, uh, and it's so interesting because in America, for example, you guys have a great, like you've got a great process of like, you can basically deduct most things through your business. Like it's very relaxed. It's like, yeah, it's fine. It's business expense. No problem right. over here. It's unbelievable. Like, like, for example, like uh, let's say I took out a whole load of people for like a night out somewhere and they're all business people. Like it's like, I'm, I'm doing deals. Can't, can't 
you get no no write off for that whatsoever. None. Really? Exactly. It's like it never happened. Like it's just no no no. You no write off. So like uh, so even that kind of type of culture as well at like government level. Not that we're getting into politics, but you can just see it. Like we're not really set up here in this part of the world to support. Uh, a lot of businesses were set up more so for bigger like US firms like Google, Amazon to come in here, set up jobs, they get a massive corporate tax break, and they employ people. And that's the thing like, you know, that's the that's the difference. And I suppose uh, we have found success with our advertising, we actually just advertise our client stories nowadays, because yeah. we have just found that like you said, yeah, like if, if someone's started with you and they're, they've done their first, you know, 10 grand a month or whatever, that's believable now to people. And uh, yeah, I think story-based marketing is vital. It's important to tell your story, but like you said, you do have to be really aware of how people interpret that. You know, that's interesting. You talk about the, the corporate uh, drawing in big American corporations. So, you know, I get these notifications on my phone every few hours that my American Express card has been charged because we run so many um, ads on YouTube and Facebook, right? Those are the two main ones, right? And um, so it's, I'll show you the notifications. I just put, picked up my phone. If you're watching the show on YouTube, you can see this. If you're listening, just trust me when, I, when I'll tell you what it says. But I just pulled up the notification and this is actually how the charge appears on American Express. Um, let me see if you can see this. Uh, yeah, it just needs to, there we go. Oh, look, yeah, Advertising Ireland. It Absolutely. says Facebook Advertising Ireland. So Absolutely. whenever you pay Facebook for ads, and it didn't used to, I mean, when I started, when we started, it wasn't this, but at some point, every charge started saying Facebook Advertising Ireland. So I'm guessing right. Facebook created a new company for oh, selling yeah. ads, selling advertising that's based in Ireland, because I don't correct me if I'm wrong, but they don't pay a corporate income tax, right? Uh, they they pay a very reduced one, yeah, and they, okay. they get away with paying practically nothing, which is cool. Like, I mean, I've I've no problem with that. By the way, it's like if if that's how the the set up, and you're going to come in and utilize it, well, great. Like you're utilizing what you know that's what business is. But yeah, like a lot of companies run a lot of their profits. Google as well, a huge. It's called Google Land in Dublin. Uh, literally, really? it's called Google Land. Um, it's just tons of Google offices because, yeah, they run a lot of their stuff through there. But, of course, you know, it'll be interesting to see in the next few years if the uh, the global corporate tax rate comes in, as uh, I know uh, the U.S. are proposing at the moment. If that does come in, I think a lot of that will go. But uh, for now, yeah, a lot of companies run their huh. all the advertising comes through Ireland, you know? Yeah, interesting, interesting. So, um Anyway, okay, so 23, however you got so crazy and Americanized as to think that this thing was possible, clearly it was. Uh, yeah. You hook up with Robert. You said you broke even. You hooked up with this, uh, your friend Robert, who's your bit, correct me if I'm wrong, but he's your business partner in Marketplace Superheroes, right? He is. Yeah, he's, he's very experienced. He's selling online since uh, like 96, I think it is. It's wow. crazy. He's one of the first, he won the first websites in uk it was called beyond hi-fi and they sold like kind of hi-fi accessories and things like that so he's in the game a long time and he just found a lot of success with marketplaces like amazon and ebay initially in the uk and then of course we we expanded that into all the different countries before we started teaching it and all the rest and it's all it's all physical products what he's done and what you've done uh on amazon you mean uh, well no i mean in general like you guys really focus on selling physical products that have yeah. to be packaged and shipped. Yeah, so there's kind of two sides to, I suppose, my journey. The the one side is the Amazon side, and then the other side is kind of the building a coaching business and, right, right. and the freight companies and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, on the Amazon side, absolutely. It's all physical stuff. We, we put our own brand and everything. It's private label products. And uh, our model is simple. Like, I mean, we, we call this thing called a rule of five. And by the way, for anyone who's listening at this from a marketing st standpoint, uh, this, this broke, this was the breakthrough moment for our business mm. where we, we were showing people, well, if you've got five Amazon products, you sell them in five countries, Amazon countries at the same time, make five sales per product per country per day at an average net profit of $5. It's five by five by five by five over a 30 day period in an average month. That's $18,750 net profit before tax. And of course, everyone's like, how the hell is that possible with five items? Like what? So, you know, we talked about this 
market multiplication. And that's what we've done. Like we take the same stuff. We just sell it in the US. We sell it in Canada. We sell it in UK, Germany, uh, France, et cetera, and, uh, and Australia and all the different markets we're now selling. And it's, it's these really boring, boring products that make a small number of sales. But you take the average across the world and very quickly, like you can have a product that's doing well. And we don't subscribe and marketplace superheroes to like, you know, there's a lot of people in the Amazon space are teaching people like go after these hyper competitive products that do make genuinely tens of thousands of sales a day in some cases. Uh, but we just went the other way. That's where we found success. You know, we're we're not like black belt level um, uh, media buyers on uh, for physical products. And we just kept it simple and we've continued to do so. And our audience now, like we've literally hundreds of uh, documented success stories. They all follow that same pattern. We just sell these boring, simple things. And there's 350 million items on Amazon. So there's mm -hmm. a lot to choose from. And that's what we've done. And we just, uh, yeah, we've just kept it simple. And the nice thing now is, now that we have the freight company, we can literally tell our members like what's going on. Like we um, will ship 8 million units this year from China to the different uh, warehouses. We can show that. We can show the revenue that's going to generate. It will be a bit over $200 million this year in our community, which is great. And, you know, that's nice that we have this transparency now that a lot of other Amazon communities don't have because most of them just have a course. And I'm not saying the course is not good. I love courses, but in the Amazon space, we've just found to be successful. Like you need to have logistics and stuff like that. Yeah. And so we just made a decision, take our money, build the, 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 the platform. We, we call it our ecosystem now. So we have everything in one spot. So you can do your translations, you can do your product research, you can, you can book your freight from China all from one place, which has cost a lot of money to do, but it's been a game changer, you know, because people just go to one spot and they get everything there. Hmm. Yeah, that's so interesting. So, and you guys, is this FBA? So are you shipping from your warehouse, your freight yeah. company is shipping to the Amazon warehouses and then the fulfillment happens from Amazon's warehouse, right? Yeah. Yes. And so Amazon made a change um, about maybe a year and a bit ago, and they brought in this thing called the IPI, which is the kind of bane of most course creators lives because it's a problem. And the IPI is the inventory performance index, which basically just means don't send us 2000 units of this thing. We want um, 50 units. And when it's selling well, send us more is basically what Amazon yeah. said, because they're a fulfillment center. They're not a warehouse. We said that for years. So we were able to really solve that problem as well. Like we store it at our different warehouses. Mm. And so then people ship a small quantity in as it then starts to, you know, bed in and become more successful. They replenish from our warehouses. And so all we do with our freight company is uh, we, sh we ship in the containers from China, all with our members products. And then, then we ship on to Amazon in smaller quantities from there. We don't do anything else. And it's been that focus in that niche, that service is great because it's just tailor made to our clients, you know? Yeah, that's interesting. So I don't, I don't sell on Amazon, but as this honestly fairly trivial side business, and I say trivial, I mean, I literally log into it a handful of times a year because yeah. um, I, I bought it from a buddy of mine and it just kind of runs on autopilot. I, I don't even know how we get sales. That's literally the truth. I don't know. It's a Shopify store. It sells yeah. a niche product. I Crazy. think when I bought it, there was some Facebook ads account running. I've never seen it. I, I don't know who pays for it. I mean, I, I assume it's shut down and it's just repeat business at this point or I, like that's, that's how d unplugged I am. But the orders keep coming and right. I have to keep ordering inventory from China. Yeah. And so every few months I order, you know, roughly 15,000 of these items, you yeah. know, I'm not here to push them. So I won't even bother saying what they are, right. but and they come to, I have a girl that helps me with it because I don't, I don't deal with it. And they go to her house yeah. and they sit there and she sends out, you know, a hundred today and 200 tomorrow and 25 the next day or whatever. And so I've always wondered, like you said, Amazon is a fulfillment house, not a warehouse. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's so cost ineffective to have to order product from China, at, you know, 50 units at a time. But otherwise, yeah. you, you end up with 10,000 units at your place and you're sending them to Amazon piecemeal and you're saying you've created an intermediary solution. Yeah. 
Yeah. And a lot of the products that we would be selling, you know, we are negotiating below minimum order quantity when people are starting out. So yeah. just in basic terms, you know, if supplier says uh, you need to order 500 of those, well, we'll say, well, let's do 60% of that. Let's do 300 or whatever it is uh, to start out. And then we establish it and then we'll move to minimum order or whatever. So we do all of that at the start. And then, yeah, they ship to our warehouses. The nice thing is as well, we we'll give our clients another big competitive advantage because we have these warehouses in the different countries. So people can actually split up their inventory in China and say, okay, I've got 300 units. Let me send 180 or whatever is in a box, whatever it is in the box account to the US. Let me send, I don't know, 80 or whatever. I'm just making up numbers right. to Europe and let me send the rest to Australia or whatever. So that's been a huge thing because before that, we had all of that. You just had to send all those units to, to one market and, and try and establish it. And if you didn't do that, it was very complicated. So I think like, I, I suppose the big principle here that we've learned has been really powerful is just really looking at our clients and ourselves too, if we're going to do it as well. Look at the actual big problems that are out there. And I suppose if you look at companies like ClickFunnels, who we're both uh, very involved with, they just nailed that, didn't they? You know, with the software and the, when they when they first brought it out, it just solved a lot of problems that we all faced. And I suppose we've just looked to do that and keep going deeper and deeper with clients. And yeah, it's been, um, it's great because like your, um, your e-commerce site business, like uh, we have now got all these different Stripe accounts now for all the different companies that we have. And like, it was great to see, you know, one day you're, you've got one big Stripe account doing well and all these new companies start coming in and that compound effect has been unbelievable for us. And it's really helped us grow 200% a year, each year, um, which is really exciting. Hey, sorry for the interruption. I just wanted to let you know, you can get a free copy of my book, The Millionaire Shortcut, which will show you the fastest way to become a millionaire in the new economy. And there's a special link just for this episode in the description. So thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoy the rest of the episode. I hope ClickFunnels still still uh, still likes me. I um, we we just launched our own uh, funnel building software called Entresoft inside oh, cool. our community. So um, yeah, I don't know. They I, who knows, right? Maybe Jeff's not their favorite guy anymore. There's plenty of room for everybody. Yeah, that's well, I believe that too, right? Um, but uh, but yeah, you're totally right. I mean, at the end of the day, anything you do can be assessed by the question of what problem are you solving? Yeah. Right. Um, so I'm curious, uh, and, and actually you just did a really good job of articulating in great detail um, and, and with you know a vivid description of like why I've never gotten into Amazon. I haven't, I mean, I've touched just yeah. about every other type of online business, you know, affiliate marketing, I've sold courses, I've, I've created coaching program. I mean, Entra has courses and coaching and mastermind and all the different levels of you know, the knowledge business. Um, I've done e-commerce. I mentioned my Shopify store, which I actually used to have more than one. Uh, I've done, I, I used to own a digital agency um, early yeah. that I sold. I've built software, like, but I've just never gotten into Amazon. Yeah. And you just explained a lot of why, because I knew there was going to be all these logistical problems that I had to tackle. Yeah. Uh, if you're doing it yourself, it, 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 we tell people, and I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, in our webinar, we literally list out all the things you would have to do if you were not working with us. Right. Um, you know, and, and it, it's a lot like, I mean, because with our freight company, we did something else that was really clever as well. Well, we think it was clever, which was uh, another problem is like talking to a supplier. If you've never spoken to someone before, it can go on for a hundred emails. One, one order could like, it's ridiculous. And freight forwarders suck. Like they're so bad at what they do because right. they're old fashioned. You know, they're not used to like these little people at home ordering like a 300 units or something. It's just not the thing because mm -hmm. that's, that's our audience. So we actually said to our clients, don't speak to the supplier. We'll speak to them mm -hmm. and, and, and just put your thing on the system, step back. And just even doing that kind of like the done for you nature of that um, has been huge. Cause when you're a beginner, you don't know what to say and how to say it. And then you have to figure it out all this stuff. And I think that's why a lot of people haven't done the likes of Amazon and, tr and truthfully, like any e-commerce business, like even your Shopify one, like until you have to figure out in that one, but well, how do you bring people cold from the internet and then convert them? And you have to get your logistics right there because if you 
drop ship that from China would take a billion years to arrive with people and right. you know, the customer support nightmares. So yeah, like, I mean, definitely there's a logistical uh, piece and the exciting thing is when you solve it, you make it easy for people. Well, then it's a great partnership. That's how we see it. Yeah. And, and honestly, that's why I bought an already existing e-commerce business yeah, all done. Not, rather than building one myself. I've had a couple that I had where I, I, I got the domain, you know, I bought like an idea or a domain that seemed, you know, I liked the idea, but I was going to have to scale it myself. And honestly, I, I just got too busy with other stuff. I never did the work because there's just, there is, there's a lot to figure out. So um, I'm curious, do you, have you looked at other uh, big marketplaces? I know Walmart is getting a lot of of chatter these days because they're kind of going in an Amazon style direction with, you know, third-party sellers. Have you, are, are you all Amazon or have you, we're, we're mostly Amazon. We do sell on eBay as well. Uh, historically, and it's so funny now because when I started, eBay was way bigger than Amazon. Right. Uh, like it was, it was killing it, you know. But Amazon just took over over the number of years because they kept investing in their logistics and everything else. Mm-hmm. And obviously, the Prime members are very powerful. Uh, but yeah, like Walmart are definitely an up and coming, interesting one. Like the guy who built Jet.com. Uh, he is the uh, he he leads the the Walmart um, uh, e-commerce team now, so they've got a really good leadership team. I think it'll be a really good uh, marketplace over the next couple of years. Right now, it's much smaller uh, right. in our in our categories anyway, but in time, it'll definitely be bigger. Um, we look for marketplaces are not perfect. Like, I mean, you don't own the customer base and everything. Everyone talks about that, and I'm like, I know all that. But at the end of the day, when you're a beginner starting out. Like, and you're, you're an experienced entrepreneur, you understand how to acquire customers and, and upsell and, you know, build a relationship through communications and all that. But if you're like a 55 year old uh, person who's worked in corporate America their whole lives, and you're just getting into online business, <laughs> like that's very complicated. So we find with the marketplace, it's a great place to start because the, the clients are already there. It's about your research process finding the products that are lower in competition that people are looking for them. And you can outrank relatively simply by putting out a better offer, better listing, et cetera, running a little bit of PPC on the Amazon platform. It suits those people great, you know? And so marketplaces will be here to stay for quite some time. And if you look at Amazon's revenue trajectory, I mean, it's, um, it's crazy. I mean, 50% of everything sold online is still sold on Amazon now, which is mind boggling when you consider that number, it's, it's nuts, you know? Yeah, it is. It is pretty amazing. So, yeah, and I agree with you. I think Amazon is is um, very stable, very predictable, very um, yeah. has a lot of staying power. And, and I, there's things I, I love about it. You totally have me in, super interested in in learning so much more about Amazon because, you know, you said you've got a guy with a million dollar revenue business who spends a couple grand a month on ads. So he's, you know, let's say he spends even three grand a month. Yeah. 36,000. So he's spending what three and a half percent of yeah, revenue it, on ads it really isn't much. I, I think as well, there's a few, there's so much to this conversation. Like we could sure. have a massive chat about all these things and we, we will definitely geek out in our time about all this. Cause we will have fun, but yeah, like, I mean, in a digital business, cause we run a digital business as well. There's, there's a lot open to you. That's not open to you on the Amazon site. So obviously you're, you're, you're putting out money on ads and everything. You're acquiring all these people, but then you've loads of other things you can do with them. And you know all that. And you're yeah, going to the back end. That's awesome. That's, that's beautiful. That's what's great about that business. And Amazon business, like you, you don't have that available to you. You just don't because you're selling on Amazon. Therefore, you are leveraging the traffic that's on Amazon uh, looking for those products right now. That, that is what you're doing. And obviously Amazon are, they're retargeting people and they're doing all the, they're, they're I mean, you can't outrank Amazon for some of these keywords. Good luck, like on right. SEO, whatever. So you get all that customers that are coming through, but it's one of those things like you don't have that back end. Therefore, yeah, your costs are not going to be as high at the front, but you're not going to get that back end benefit because they're, they're Amazon's customers. So there's that. That's kind of the thing too. And I, I say a marketplace business. It's not a perfect business, but I don't think there's any perfect business. Out no, there. no, there's not. Yeah, I mean, because you're not dealing with chargebacks and, and refunds and support. I mean, you have to deal with support requests on the back end, but it's totally different than owning the customer. 
Well, well, yeah, and, and that's it. And even on Amazon with FBA, like you don't do customer service, you know, yeah. you just don't Now, Okay. If there's a product specific question, you're going to get a little uh, question, but, but like in all the businesses we operate, it's like a handful of emails a month about that. It really is a handful. And that's even businesses doing 80 to 80 or hundred grand a month in revenue. So yeah, like it, it's, it's, it's just one like, and I think I'm, I'm blessed in, in many ways that we are involved in so many of these different businesses and we kind of like, we're involved in like, there's, there's not, there's, there's, there's drawbacks here. We have the benefits on the other side over here. So we've kind of, uh, we're in the middle of it and we're getting, we get the benefits of all sides really. And that, but that took time to develop. Uh, not everybody, you know, does that overnight, but, uh, but yeah, uh, it's, it's great. And, um, there you, so go. you, you mentioned the number of products, right. And it just, people just can't really fathom how big Amazon is. So uh, that's what I was looking up while we were talking. So this says that uh, a typical Walmart supercenter, which we've probably all been into a Walmart, the supercenters, right? The biggest Walmarts, uh, and I'm looking at Wikipedia, stocks about 120,000 items. Yeah. So imagine how many different items you could fit in 2,000 Walmarts where every single one of those 2,000 Walmarts had completely different products than any of the other 1,999 Walmarts. That it's, would be how big Amazon is. It's nuts, like, and 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 even wow. with ourselves, you know, we often say even with our and we're we're like, compared to Amazon, we're tiny, like you know, even. Our, well, by the our, way, I'm sorry, it'd be three thousand WalMarts just, just to get nuts. it right. Yeah, absolutely nuts. But yeah, as I say, we're tiny, we're a little gnat, you know, compared to Amazon. But at the end of the day, like, we will ship a container every day now from China. Uh, every day and every month, therefore, we are shipping an Olympic-sized swimming pool full of products. Yeah. So with our, with our community, and it's like even thinking about that, like in our, and we're small, but like even that's a lot of products. Like I mean, you know, and when you see our warehouses and we show them a lot, like to our clients, and obviously when we're doing webinars, we show them as well. Like it's it, they're big spaces with lots of items in them, you know, and it's like. That's the thing, you know. I I even can't fathom the size of Amazon sometimes. Like, I mean, per I, I doing a webinar, I I calculated it out. It was like by the time I finished doing a webinar, Amazon would generate like six million dollars or something, something like that in sales. You know, it's just crazy. Like, in like you know, an hour or something. Yeah, it's yeah. it's absolutely nuts. Like, and so uh, yeah, it's 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 interesting. So you don't need you don't even need you don't even need a, a slot. You don't even need a a slice of that pie that you could, that you could even see without a microscope. <laughs> exactly. If Amazon is a pie, you could yeah. take like a single molecule out of the crust yeah, and still probably live a really nice life. Well, well, we're building a website now and we've, we've a whole team on this called hero deals uh, with a Z uh, dot com. Okay. It's not live yet. It will be live though. And we're, we said to our community, look, we want to find more ways to help you sell more products. So we're building our own site. Uh, it won't be like Amazon. It'll be a bit different. It's very people oriented, mm -hmm. uh, top telling the stories of our sellers and who they are and stuff like that. But yeah, like we have 2000 different items, you know, that we represent from all of our members and ourselves. You know, we don't have millions, but even at that, like we, we were running some numbers on that. And like, it was like, if you were doing a billion in revenue, you would still be fractions of a percent of Amazon, which again, is hard to comprehend. So you're right. Like, yeah, I mean, it's, and the other side of that too, is for people starting out, if they want to get to make 10,000 a month in, in net profit, which is where a lot of people want to be. It's like yeah. the magic number for a lot of people, right? Right. Widening it out and looking at an Amazon, it's really very, very achievable, or relatively simply, you know, I think sometimes people starting out, myself included, I don't know, like I want to, oh, I want to do a hundred million or something. Whenever really, like when you're starting out, you don't need that much. You just want to get a bit of success under your belt and then you can start to grow and scale, but not everybody needs to get yeah. like your scale in the business. And it's, it's, it's great, but also there's, there's time. Yeah, I'll, sure I'll, I'd, I'll tell anybody any day of the week, like, you know, I, I could, I don't have a nine to five because I wouldn't know what to do if I had 16 hours a day that I didn't have to work. Yeah. Right. I have, I have like a, I don't know. It's, I'd say the actual work in Entra is probably about a eight to seven. Yeah. But even that, I mean, sometimes I'm laying, I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm laying in bed and I'm answering Slack messages, 
you know, I go to the gym at 4.30 in the morning and between sets, I'm yeah. forwarding support emails or I'm checking in on this. I mean, I'm, I, you could argue I work 18 hours a day. Like, yeah, not careful. Like you said earlier, careful what you wish for, right? Yeah, like, I mean, yeah, because whenever we were just doing Amazon, we were properly doing the lifestyle business thing. We were, right. and we weren't making as much money now but it's not all about money either. And I suppose uh, coming around, we're not, it's not like we're complaining or anything like that. I suppose what we're saying is being transparent as you are, as I am. Like I always tell people, I used to have a lifestyle business. I don't anymore because I, I am more focused on genuinely. I am more focused on seeing the members succeed. And the same for you. Like you could, you don't need to keep going. You could just chill out a lot more like we all could. But genuinely, when you get to a level of income where you're not thinking about money as much anymore, or really at all, like I own my house and right. my, all of that, like what is left is, well, I want to see other people succeed. And I used to say BS to that years ago. I thought that's such a lot of crap. That's just not true. These people are lying. But but really and truly, and say what, you're, what you think about that, but really and truly for me, that's all there is really then eventually seeing other people succeed and do well because like how many cars do you need? How many, right. like how many, how many rooms in your house do you need? Right? Yeah. I actually, it's funny you say that just this morning, the newest episode of my blog got released and in it, there was a section I was walking around in Vegas uh, talking about, you know, what is, what is it? What is time that moves humanity forward? Like, what are, the, what are the qualities of intervals of time where people are doing the kind of work that results in forward progress, either for their own life or for humanity as a whole? And it's time when you're not stressed about money. It's time when you have certain other factors in place. You have you know, access to good relationships, access to good information, enough mental clarity and health and energy to be able to think creatively and productively and then execute on that. So let's say, the, it, you know, for anybody to be a truly effective person, they need to have 20 hours a week where they have those conditions in place. Mm -hmm. And then they can actually think about how do I make my life qualitatively better? And how do I potentially make other people's lives qualitatively better, right? So yeah. for me, I could go, oh, well, I don't have to work. So I could make 80 hours a week of call it this, progressively quality time yeah i'm one guy i could have 80 hours a week at that time or i could help and it's like you said this sounds so cliche and it's easy, so easy to dismiss but what if i could help a million other people have 20 yeah. hours a week well is it worth me sacrificing my 80 hours a week to help a million people have 20 hours so so my instead of my 80 hours a week i'm now helping create 20 million hours a week of time that humanity can be moving forward yeah, and again, I would say that's a sacrifice worth making, you know, and yeah. someday I'm going to die and go, okay, well, what did my life amount to? And if I exactly. can say, well, for at least a few decades, I gave up my possible 80 hours, but I helped create 100 million other hours for other people. Yeah, I'll make that trade, you know? I, absolutely. I, I said this to a guy, a uh, 22 year old fellow the other day, really nice guy, <clears throat> was trying my best not to be condescending, you know, as you get a little bit older, but uh I just, he was talking about wanting to do a hundred million or whatever. And I just said to him, I was like, man, that's cool. If that's what you really want, that's, that's cool. Uh, but as I said to him, you know, uh, the same thing I said, you can only buy so many things and whatever. But I said to him, do you know where your life's going to change as you get a little bit older when you start going to more funerals and that's when mm -hmm. things change and you're, you're seeing other people, you know, passed away or, or whatever the case may be. Uh, that changed a lot for me because I remember going to my grandmother's funeral, for example. And uh, just they were talking about how she loved to make bread, right? And that really hit me because it was like, that was a lovely thing for her, something she enjoyed, that's great. But I remember so, sort of sta sitting there thinking, you know, well, do I want people at my funeral to be like, yeah, Stephen loved to play golf? Or do I want people to say, um, you know, Stephen helped a lot of other people? I'm not saying that any, like my grandmother's ain't less or anything like that i'm just saying for me that kind of hit me like and i'm like yeah like maybe some people may maybe say it's ego whatever but i'd love to feel like like you just said when i do get to the end of my life and it's a little bit more of it now but it's important that i do feel like i i helped other people 
um, change. And, and for marketplace superheroes, what is honestly like the best thing is when people contact us and say, you actually helped me change my life. And I'm sure you get that all the time too. And that is, that's the best, like, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, it is. And you know, the reality is the world needs bread and that's the right. world needs education. Like, um, I'm curious. So actually I'm going to, and that's a great note to end on. It's a, a very beautiful, um, kind of bookend, but I do, I do want to ask you a question. Cause I had this sort of zany idea, I think last week. And my wife told me like, that's a really bad and frankly kind of weird and dark idea. So I hope you don't do it, but I want to, I want to bounce it off you. So Please. I actually was thinking about calling up. I happen to know some people who make headstones. That's yeah. their business. They make, I mean, somebody dies, you call them and they make the headstone. Yeah. I was actually going to have my own headstone made. Wow. That's cool. Ship to my office and have like my own grave, like with a real heavy, like a 400 pound granite headstone, you know, yeah. with my, my date of birth or sorry, my date of death, TBD mm -hmm. and the little description where they put, you know, father, husband, whatever. I was going to fill in a few of those and then just put dot, dot, dot. So yeah. it's kind of like leaving these blanks so that every day as I'm sitting in my desk, I can look over and see like my actual headstone yet to be completed. And I she was like, that's super dark. Don't do that. People will be totally weirded out when they come in your office. I'm curious what you think. Well, maybe they would, but who cares? You know, I mean, if that, if that inspires you and reminds you to live your life in a certain way, I think that's excellent. And Steve Jobs said the whole thing, you know, you, you have nothing to lose because at the end of the day, we're all naked or whatever he said and right. die one day. And, and that is true, man. You know, like, I mean, that, and for anybody listening, by the way, and I do say this on webinars and stuff as well. If you're not happy where you are now, like I wasn't happy when I was in my twenties, like you owe it to your future self to make a change now, be it working with Jeff, come and speaking to ourselves, whatever it yeah. is, go and find someone doing something and, and go and, and, and do that. Like, because if not, you will wake, like I, we have a two-year-old now, Harvey, and uh, like his two years of life has just gone by like that. Like he's, he's on two all of a sudden. I'm like, oh my God, yeah. I just flew. And so uh, everyone says when you get a little bit older, your life does start to accelerate in, in speed. And so, yeah, like get, make the change now so you can reap the wars later on, 100%. Amen to that. Well, this is your episode. So I'd say if somebody's hearing that, I'm grateful if I'm in consideration, but call Stephen, man. This sounds, this sounds amazing. Um, on that note, how do they find you? Where can they not only follow you personally, also learn more about Marketplace Superheroes? Give us all the links. Yeah, so MarketplaceSuperheroes.com, uh, H-E-R-O-E-S is a great place to go. Uh, I would really recommend our YouTube channel for anybody who likes what I've talked about. Just search Marketplace Superheroes over there. We put two videos out a week, put a lot of effort into that. Now, if you want to send me a personal message, I don't do very much on Instagram, but I do check it. So you can go Stephen J. Summers, that's with a P-H, and then S-O-M-E-R-S. -E Feel free to send me a DM and I'll respond to you any way I can. Amazing. We'll, uh, we'll put those links in the show notes you. um, on YouTube and the podcast platforms. And Stephen, you've totally piqued my interest. I have some homework uh, and learning to do. Thank you so, so much uh, for being a guest on Millionaire Secrets. Congratulations on all your success. Thank you. And I look forward to telling my audience about what you do as well, because I think what you do is important, vital, and uh, let's, let's uplift people together, my friend. If you love entrepreneurship, then you'll want to keep watching. So click the next interview right here for some more Millionaire Secrets Gold. Thanks for watching. You have to go narrow and deep on what you're doing. You can't be the jack of all trades. When I started to do affiliate marketing, I could have gone into YouTube. I could have gone into Snapchat. I could have tried and all this stuff, but I've stuck with Facebook. I just drilled down on one thing.